Greetings all. And thank you for listening and tuning in today. I'm your host, Pastor Abed, here to discuss with you, is the sun moving? You see, it was seen that even though we are in the 21st century, the question of whether the earth is moving is still being questioned. Yes. Yes, you got it. Still being questioned. You see, science has been at the very heart of the Western world attention on this matter. It has the very blood, the very vein of their existence, if you will, as opposed to those who believe in the scriptures life to press on. However, it is this same attention that has put this battle in the crosshairs of the Lord. Yes, you got it. The battle between the heliocentric or better known as the sun center and the geocentric, better known as the earth center. Two models which has been fought over a widespread of history. However, as one begins to learn from the past and uncover those things that are almost completely silent in our now time, one can only begin to ponder. Ponder on the two sentences that Albert Einstein conveyed. The sun is at rest and the earth is moving or the sun moves and the earth is at rest. Quoted from Galileo was wrong. The church was right. The evidence from modern science, volume one by Dr. Robert Singenius. This leads to our discussion today, brothers and sisters. You see, these two sentences have helped shape the minds of lay persons. Those who are not yet skilled in the art of physics, as well as those who are unaware of the secrets of the Bible and its true stance on life. However, we are here to shed light, to shed light on the true Bible's account. One that is not based upon how much money you have or more convenient simply because of the traditions that those that are being followed today, but rather one that is true and just no matter who and where it comes from. A belief that the sentences so eloquently quoted, spoken of by Albert Einstein, be given a fair argument to prove the existence of one over the other. So today, brothers and sisters, sit back in your seats, open your ears and allow for the most high to reveal this little known history. As we began to go into the beginning of the thoughts and the ideas of those who have shaped these two models. You see, unknown to many persons in the world, the geocentric model was still an equal playing field in the early part of the world. As a matter of fact, the geocentric model was the first to arrive on the scene with Eudoctus of Sinus, a great mathematician and astronomer who lived around 380 BCE according to NASA. However, it was the well-known Aristotle, who also himself was Greek, who, according to the Britannica Encyclopedia, showed the planets in the celestial realms moving around the earth in a form and of an orderly manner. You see, many scholars believe this idea behind why Greeks believe the earth was at the center of the universe was because of the Greek strong belief system in the gods when it is. 
This is primarily because many scholars agree that the Greeks were heavily influenced by the Egyptians. As a matter of fact, the World History Encyclopedia underneath the Greek astronomy section clearly conveys and states that the Greeks were latecomers to the field. Drawing on the works of the Babylonians and the Egyptians, this gives more firm authority to what was stated by Josephus in his Antiquity of the Jews, Book 1, Chapter 8, Paragraph 2. You got it. Where he states that it was Abraham who was from Mesopotamia of the Bible who communicated to them the arithmetic and delivered to the science of astronomy for before Abraham came into Egypt they were unacquainted with those parts of learning for the science came from the Chaldeans into Egypt and from thence to the Greek also. Now check that out, brothers and sisters. You see, after Aristotle developed a much more detailed geocentric model from Eudoctus of Sinus, then later was refined this was even more refined by Claudius Ptolemus, better known as Ptolemy, who constructed a more detailed overview of those things of the world. However, it is to be duly noted here that although the Greeks were the guiding light for the carnally minded persons of the world to understand the geometric model. The Holy Bible, you got it, the good book, the good book was and has always declared the geocentric model. For those who have spiritual ears to hear, as it declares scripture, such as, you got it, Turn with me to Isaiah 45 and 18. For it reads, For thus said the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it. He created it not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. Or what about verse what about verse Ecclesiastes chapter one, verse five, where it says the sun arises and the sword goes down and hasted to his place where he arose. Or what about Psalms 104 and five, where it states that who laid the foundations of the earth, that it should not be removed forever. Or follow me if you if you have your apocrypha with me to the wisdom of Solomon, chapter seven, verse 16, where it reads, for in his hands are both we and our works, all wisdom also and knowledge of workmanship. Verse 17, for he hath given me certain knowledge of the things that are namely to know how the earth was made. And the operation of the elements, verse 18, the beginning, ending, and mist of the times. The alterations of the turning of the sun and the change of the seasons, verse 19. The circuits of years and the position of stars. As one can see, the Bible here 
provides a plethora of scriptures that one can go to understand more. However, even though the Bible declares it to be true, many misunderstand the Bible and use it to declare their own theory, such as there's the flat earth and or the heliocentric model. Now, for a more detailed view of the history of the flat earth and the heliocentric model, click the link down below in the bio. As for today, we'll be introducing both sides of the models in order to create a more equal boundary. You see, for the sake of time, we will continue on to the first heliocentric model. You see, unlike the geocentric model, the heliocentric model has been a progressively built central theory that has, through the process of time, begun to be considered a perfectly infallible, faultless theory with little wounds. This model has 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 taken the token for being one of the greatest, the popular models. However, it was contrary up to the 15th century. You got it. However, you may wonder, how is it then in ancient times, the earth at the center of the universe was the most well known and liked model versus the heliocentric model that we see today which now is taught as a fact rather than a theory by all institutions and schools across the globe with very few of the layman persons speaking on the geocentric model of the earth you see to understand this one must go back into the times of history Beginning with Aristarchus or Samus, living between 310 and 230 BCE, who was the first Greek astronomer to oppose the geocentric model and uphold the heliocentric model. However, according to world history encyclopedia, Aristarchus of Samos' model of the heliocentric was first rejected. And the first geocentric model was upheld for at least another 1,700 years. However, some scholars actually disagree. Disagree with the Aristarchus belief. The belief in the heliocentric system altogether, primarily due to it only surviving work being on geometric arguments. You see? However, it wasn't until Nicholas Copernicus, yes, living between 1473 to 1543 that a new proposal consisted of the earth orbiting around the sun once a year and earth rotating on its axis each day according to the world history encyclopedia that really had a change a, a pivotal point in changing the world's outlook on the two models prior to this prior to this the geocentric model reigned mighty this new proposal that Copernicus brought inspired inspired Galio you got it Galio who according to the Britannica made fundamental contributions to the science of motion and astronomy and development of the scientific method however he is considered by many to be the father of modern science however few very few have quoted from his last words. Yes. His last words on his dying bed that was sent to Rakanaki that could have changed, that had the potential to change the shape of this world's viewpoint by a landslide if properly given time and resources to be properly explained and understood.
Let us know in the comment section what are your thoughts on either models. Why the world hasn't heard of Galio's last words. Let us read it. Let us reason together. Until next time. Amen.